Viewers of Mark Felton's video on the Dieppe Raid will have seen this image at the 5 minute 47 second mark and had one of two reactions. To those unfamiliar with the history of the Calgary tanks, it is just one of hundreds of unremarkable British Commonwealth military cap badges. Those familiar with the history and traditions of the unit, however, will have noticed that this image depicts a post-war badge and regimental title. In other words, it is incorrect. It is a minor point to be sure, but historians are often mindful of such Kleinigkeiten, small matters, and cap badges are deliberately designed to be representative of communities and historical events. Every regimental badge in the Commonwealth tells a unique story, though true understanding often requires more than just a surface level glance. In the case of the Calgary tanks, researchers hoping to dive below the surface have been long stymied by the absence of a published regimental history. Very likely this difficulty applied when Mr. Felton researched supporting imagery for his video. Unfortunately, the most common accessible sources do not explicitly illustrate the complex histories of unit insignia. The badge in question was only relevant for about 10 years in the middle of the regiment's 112 year history, which makes the error even easier to forgive. For what it is worth, this is the correct badge for the Calgary tanks in the Second World War. Very similar, which further mitigates an honest mistake on Mr. Felton's part. And yet, every minor difference between these two badges paints a picture of a richly textured history. What at first glance seems a simple thing suddenly becomes a story with roots as far back as the American Revolution. After the Treaty of Paris in 1783, territories outside the new United States were collectively known as British North America. In 1867, a number of these provinces united to become the nation of Canada. In 1871, British Columbia joined Confederation with the promise that Canada would be linked by a transcontinental railway. To build this railway, the Northwest Territories would need to be settled. The territories were home to a volatile mix of hunters, traders, restless indigenous tribes, and American bootleggers. A number of violent interactions prompted the formation of the Northwest Mounted Police in 1873. Their historic march west a year later was a 900 mile trek to bring peace, order and good government to the prairies. They established Fort McLeod in unsettled territory and since it was so far away from the trading post at Edmonton, an intermediate post was ordered to ease communications. In 1875, F Troop of the Northwest Mounted Police established a new post which Superintendent James McLeod named after a castle in Scotland he had once summered at. Fort Calgary was soon linked to the rest of the country by the Canadian Pacific Railway, and the town which grew up outside the Palisades became the town of Calgary in 1884. Ten years later, with 4,000 citizens, Calgary was declared a city. In 1905, the province of Alberta was carved out of the Northwest Territories. Except for a handful of cavalry units, there was a little military to speak of in the province. Britain's responsibility for defending Canadian soil had ceased, and anxious citizens looked to increase their security in the face of U.S. expansionism. The Spanish-American War turned U.S. attention elsewhere, but a strong militia had already become a cultural touchstone in Canada. A former tea tester named William Charles Gordon Armstrong moved to Calgary from Lincolnshire, served on city council, and made some money in the construction business. He was also a captain in the local cavalry unit, and twice requested to form his own infantry regiment in Calgary. In 1908, he assembled a number of citizens in his home and announced he would try a third time. Deciding to pattern themselves after the Queen's own rifles in Toronto, they petitioned the commander of the newly created Military District 13, Sir Sam Steele. By January 1910, the new regiment was being reported in the newspapers. And on 1 April 1910, the 103rd Regiment Calgary Rifles was officially authorized. By 1914, the new regiment had eight 50-man companies. When the First World War began, Canada's mobilization plans were thrown out the window by the eccentric Minister of Militia. Existing regiments stayed in Canada, and the 103rd remained a part-time militia unit, sending drafts of men to the overseas combat units of the newly created Canadian Expeditionary Force. Calgary men from the 103rd went to the 10th, 31st, and 50th battalions, which all saw combat in the trenches, as well as a number of other battalions eventually broken up for reinforcements. In 1919, the CEF battalions returned home, eager to preserve their histories and traditions. The militia regiments that spawned them also wanted to continue their lineage. In a typically Canadian compromise, both the CEF battalions and the existing militia regiments were disbanded, and new regiments were created to perpetuate both, adopting their histories and newly won battle honours. And so in 1920, the Calgary Regiment was born, 
and after much discussion granted perpetuation of the 10th and 50th Battalion CEF, as well as paper battalions to perpetuate CEF units that had not served in combat. The 1st Battalion of the Calgary Regiment became a Highland unit, the 2nd Battalion a regular infantry battalion. Neither unit retained the rifle regiment traditions of the 103rd, which quickly disappeared from public consciousness. In May 1924, the two battalions became separate regiments, the first becoming the Calgary Highlanders, the second simply the Calgary Regiment, and the paper battalions disappeared. The Calgary Regiment adopted a badge based on the coat of arms of the city of Calgary. The motto onward is that of both the city and its regiment. The sunburst from the coat of arms was also adopted and later proved problematic, as military heraldry experts will insist that nothing can be shown superior to the monarch's crown. This is the badge that Mr. Felton's video should show. It was worn from the 1920s until after the Second World War. In 1936, the militia was once again reorganized in order to both mechanize and modernize. The Calgary Regiment became the Calgary Regiment Tank and adopted the black beret that the Royal Tank Regiment had worn in the trenches. The unit enthusiastically trained on canvas mock-ups and technically was still considered an infantry unit as Canadian tank battalions belonged to the infantry until August 1940 when the Canadian Armoured Corps was created. The regiment did not mobilize until 1941 when the Calgary Regiment joined the 1st Army Tank Brigade, an independent tank unit, and trained on Matildas and then Churchill tanks before being selected as the tank unit to land at Dieppe. The overseas unit became officially the 14th Canadian Army Tank Regiment, but were more popularly known as the Calgary Tanks. A second battalion remained in Canada as part-time militia. The 14th CTR rebuilt after Dieppe, re-equipped with Shermans, and became the 14th Canadian Armoured Regiment to reflect its change in equipment and role. The Calgary Tanks served throughout the Italian campaign, and in 1945 returned home to become a single battalion militia unit once more. In 1946, the unit was granted the King's Own prefix to its name, reflecting its official alliance with the King's Own Royal Regiment of the British Army in the 1920s. The badge Mr. Felton shows was adopted sometime after both the war and, of course, the addition of King's Own to the regimental title. Not coincidentally, the new design also deleted the sunburst. The Red Rose of Lancaster was retained from the original badge, continuing to honor the Allied Regiment in the British Army. Less than five years later, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II ascended the throne, and the badge's Tudor crown was officially replaced with a St. Edward's patterned crown. Military buffs note today with irony that the KOCR has adopted cavalry traditions. These are inherited due to their membership in the Armoured Corps. The Calgary Regiment, for all its unique history and lineage, was never a cavalry unit. The King's Own Calgary Regiment still exists in Calgary, sharing Mawada armories with the Calgary Highlanders. Their relationship is not without irony either. The KOCR were formerly junior in the order of precedence to the Highlanders when both were infantry regiments, but today units of the Royal Canadian Armoured Corps are automatically senior to the units of the Royal Canadian Infantry Corps, putting the KOCR higher in the official order of precedence. Public visibility is another matter. The Highlanders have produced a number of written histories about its wartime exploits, and a number of films have depicted actions fought by the Highlanders or their predecessors. To date, the Calgary tanks have not had extensive coverage in print, with the notable exception of Hugh Henry's excellent summary of the regiment's exploits at Dieppe. His PhD dissertation goes into a little more detail about the regiment's service in the Second World War. Otherwise, very little about the regiment's service in Italy, or indeed the 1st Canadian Armoured Brigade as a whole, has made it into print. There can be no doubt the King's Own Calgary Regiment, and all their many guises over the years, have a rich, unique, and proud history and deserve to be portrayed in media accurately and with the respect they earned in places like Vimy Ridge, Italy, and Afghanistan. The regiment remains engaged in the struggle to publish a definitive account, and until such a history is produced, the KOCR Gallery in the Military Museums in Calgary is an excellent and highly recommended destination for the kind of person that would enjoy watching Mr. Felton's videos, or indeed, those on my own channel.